Good morning, afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm still getting used to this 1.30 thing for the show. Uh, thank you for tuning back into the Manufacturing Alliance podcast, where we talk about all things U.S. manufacturing. Um, it doesn't matter really what industry. If it's made here, we kind of want to talk about it. And uh, if it goes along with things being made here, we want to talk about it. Uh, I get to be your host, Tony Demakis from Alliance Specialties and Laser Sales, uh, where we are mold makers that don't build molds. And as ridiculous as that sounds, all it means is we do all the things that um, you as mold makers don't have time to do or, um, you know, it's not your top priority. So everything from polishing to laser welding, laser engraving, hot runner repair, preventative mold maintenance, um, that's what we do. We do it all under one roof and, uh, and we do that to uh, minimize your expense and um, your time delays. Along with that, we also build a line of laser welding and laser engraving equipment uh, all here in the United States um, so that if anything happens, you have a trusted source to be able to get that fixed. So um, that's us in a nutshell. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, and uh, we're here to help you. And so um, uh, our guest today is going gonna, is gonna to tell me I did all of that completely wrong. And that's fine. Uh, he's on because I value his opinion and I've heard amazing things about him. But uh, before we get to that, remember that this show is live and it's live for a reason. It's live because we want you to be involved and, uh, and hear your thoughts as well. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any feedback for us, um, go ahead and put that in the chat. We are live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and um, YouTube. And so on any of those platforms, you can watch along with us. You can ask any questions. You can um, give us some feedback, and, uh, and we'll talk about th those things as well. Um, if you don't feel confident enough to ask a question, that's fine. Do me a favor. Just put your name in the chat. Put your company in the chat so that we can give you a shout out and your company can get some recognition. And then you're not just wasting time. You're, you're branding and marketing. You're getting your company's name out there for doing nothing but watching a podcast. And it's super easy, super simple. Um, so there's those things. Uh, yeah, did I miss anything, Vanessa? No, she's saying no. Good, I got those things done. Good. So um, our guest today is, is somebody that um, I have not uh, honestly spent any time with. We've talked on the phone. Um, I've seen him a couple times at the AMBA conference just passing by. The dude is a really snazzy dresser, and I dig it. I, I mean, it's like sometimes you just got to peacock and put yourself out there, and, and, uh, and, he, and he does that in a good way. I mean, I, have, uh, I loved it. I noticed him every time he was there. But uh, Ken Sewell is going to join us, and uh, he, I, I've been impressed with him, and our whole team was impressed with him. So I'm going to bring him in. Uh, Ken, how are you? I'm well. You're embarrassing me, Tony. <laughs> yeah, see that? I had you blushing already. That's good. Already, already. Uh, thanks it's for the thanks for the invite. Tony. Yeah, you know, um, sometimes we get stuck thinking that manufacturing is just the nuts and bolts and the making of things, instead of realizing that there's so much more that goes into it: the sales side of it, the customer service side of it and all those other things. And that's where a lot of people end up having problems and they don't know what to do. Everybody knows how to make their widget. They don't need to know how to make their widget better, but what they need to know is how to tell more people how to make their widget or that they make this widget. Yeah, I think that if you go back to uh, you know, college, and if you were a doctor or a lawyer, you went to law school, you went to medical school, and they taught you the, the actual practice of law or the practice of medicine, but they didn't tell you how to run a business. Right. And they didn't tell you the things around how do you market and sell what you do? How do you have conversations with people that allow two mutually uh, or two professionals mutually interested in solving a problem figure out how to solve that problem together? And so uh, that's the joy of selling. So that's what I get to do. And it's so much fun. I think I mean every part of life, whether you consider yourself a salesperson or not, every part of life has some aspect of sales in it. So just because that's not your title, right? You could be a baker. I mean, I don't care what you're doing. You're still selling your ideas um, to to a market, to people. Whether I mean, you could be a parent. You still got to learn those sales strategies because you got to deal with the worst customers of all, your kids. Yeah, and I think that you know, salespeople get a bum rap. Totally. And most of it deserved, right? Uh, because there's a ton of uh, pushy, uh, aggressive, slimy, manipulative. I like to call them manipulative lying son of a bitch. So, <laughs> well, I had to curse on this podcast. Like, Absolutely. I didn't know. I so, Absolutely, yeah. Vanessa, edit that out later. So, um, 
I'll wait as long. So, and I think that we get a bum rap, and a lot of that's true. But I think if at the end of the day, a good salesperson is a listener that is trying to figure out what's the truth in the conversation. Is yeah. there something we can do together to, to solve a problem, or is it not the right fit? And in my world, as long as I get that answer, I'm, not, I'm good, I'm happy. And so I'm right. trying to teach my clients, you know, be curious and, and, and not judgmental and ask good questions, you know, and help the prospect, help the person you're talking to discover what's the right thing to do. And that translates to your children, yeah. to your employees, to your colleagues, to, you know, if you're helping your employee discover what's the right thing to do in a problem, that's the same stuff. The same right. Thing. So I don't want to get too far ahead before people actually know who you are and why they should care. I mean, I think that's fair, right? So um, Ken, do me a favor, tell people a little bit about who you are and, uh, and, and about the, uh, the company there so that um, anybody listening knows. I, I, okay, now I need to listen. He's not just some schmuck. Uh, I'm pro- some of that's probably true. I am the managing partner, Ken Sewell, the managing partner of uh, the Sandler with the EM Consulting Group out of uh, Troy, Michigan. We are a Sandler franchise. Sandler's been around for a long time, uh, and we are a performance development sales leadership company, and ultimately what we do is help our clients learn the process of selling in a repeatable, predictable way that allows them to sell more easily. You know, we work in the areas of prospecting awareness and helping our clients recognize that account management is a great thing to do, but account acquisition is really where it is, uh, helping them make sure that the stuff that is in the pipeline, the opportunities that are in the pipeline are uh, real, have some genuineness to the opportunity to close it. Uh, we work on making sure that our clients aren't being struck by uh, last minute price objections. So we help our clients with profit margin protection. We help them uh, create st- strategy around uh, keeping their clients long-term. What do I have to do to go wider and deeper with a client so that I keep this guy strategically for for a while? And then basically just um, best practices around selling and sales leadership. And how do I help my clients navigate those conversations that sort of make them flinch or catch them off guard and how to have the conversations to get ultimately to the truth. What I'm trying to do is help my clients make the prospect, make the person they're talking to feel safe enough that they can tell them the truth. Yeah, let's do some business together, or yeah, maybe this isn't the right thing, and be okay with either answer. And that's what we do in a nutshell. Yeah, and I think all of those things are, are so good, because the one thing you didn't say as, a, as a, a sales leader and a teacher is, you know, get somebody to buy something that they don't want, right? Yeah. That's yeah. never the goal. No, it, it, there's, we have this line that it's uh, unethical to sell somebody something they don't need. Yeah. But it's also unethical to not sell them something they do need. Oh, I like so I'm that. Try, I'm trying to figure out which side of that equation they're on, right? Right. And if they're on one side, great. They're on the other side, great. Now I know. We've had, uh, we've had customers. Michelle went and visited somebody. Uh, you met Michelle. She went and visited somebody. Mm-hmm. This was before your class. Um, by the time she got through the, the gatekeeper, right? The gatekeeper wouldn't let us in, wouldn't let us in, wouldn't let us let She finally talked to somebody and the guy says, um, you guys do everything I need. Why haven't I heard of you sooner? And sometimes that gatekeeper does too good of a job and they're not letting in solutions that the company needs. Yeah, you know, the gatekeeper really has two jobs. You know, keep the bad people out, let the good people in. And sometimes we need to share with the gatekeeper, well, this is what we do, maybe he is interested in. And to no disrespect to any gatekeeper out in the world, you know, sometimes you have to move past it because you want to talk to the person who can make the decision. Yeah. And that's the yep. thing we always tell them. Go to the person that can actually decide whether your products or services are worthwhile. I have this uh, saying, or Sam has a saying, don't take no from someone who can't give you yes. Man, he's got all these good one-liners. We're going to write all these down. We're going to have there's, memes there's for book, all of them. A book. Most of them are in the book. So. This is going to be all Ken Seawall memes from now on. They're going to well, be they're, they're, they're going to be awesome. 
very few of them are mine, and the ones that are mine are probably un, uh, uncouth to talk about on a live stream. So. Well, we're going to give you credit for them, and then, and then you can fight it out with whoever. I mean, it, it's fun. Um, Steve Hack from Prodigy Mold is listening. He says, first time caller, long time listener. Just kidding. I know you never listen, man. You're just mm -hmm. joking with me. But uh, he's he's a good uh, he's a good drinking buddy. If you like mm -hmm. bourbon and things like that, if you know Steve, good guy. And uh, Andrew Hartman from Progressive Components has uh, chimed in and told us he's there. So if you guys have any questions or thoughts as we're going through, please let us know um, what you're thinking, and we can we can ask some open ended questions too, because I know that's one of your that's one of your uh, components of teaching how to do this it's asking good questions yeah um, I think what we don't do is give our prospects enough credit for wanting to tell their stories and and I think I would be remiss in not asking my clients good tough questions to challenge their thinking right because if they were in a position that um, they were good they, won't, they don't need my help, right? And they're, they're talking to me for a reason. And most of the time it's because they've got some struggles somewhere that they want to see if they can fix. Right. And so I owe it to them to, to look them in the eye and ask them the tough questions about how important is this to fix in the world. Right. And so I think that's you know really getting to the point. Of it. But I think even before you get there, Tony, it's really about attitude. Yep. There's a mindset shift that has to happen. You know, I'm not in selling to get my emotional needs met because you know that's not where it's going to happen. You know, right. Uh, I got hung hung up on yesterday for the first time in like forever. You got <laughs> hung up on? I did. It was so funny. I'm like, wow, I haven't had that happen to me in like a long time. And, but it was funny because yeah, it happens, right? You know, people don't want to talk to salespeople regardless of what they're you know whether they're good or not or snazzy dress or green or something. <laughs> um, and I'm okay with it because my mindset is that I have a great product and service. I know it helps people. I've got plenty of stories to share. And if you want to hear the story, great. If you don't want to hear the story, great. And, you know, the first thing I would tell any of the listeners is make sure your self-worth is high and your need for approval is low. Yeah. And then just go do what you got to do. You know, make the calls, talk to the people, get cold. You know, I've... Um I try not to hang up on salespeople because I've been in that situation. I try really, really, really hard. Um, but there's sometimes where they won't listen to you. They're not, they're not interested in you as the customer and you're the customer right off the bat, right? Um, I, I feel like there's two totally different business models of, of, this, of sales. And uh, one of them to me is Dale, Dale Carnegie. I love Dale mm -hmm. Carnegie. And the other one is uh, Grant Cardone. And mm -hmm. I know both of them are very, very, very successful. One of them lo I love, the other one I hate. And I, I'd be happy to tell you why and which one, but I'd like, uh, what's your thoughts on those two models? Well, you know, I don't really have an opinion on them. Uh, to me, it's important for me to ask for permission to have the conversation. So yeah. in almost every conversation, it'll start with some version of, Tony, can I take, half a minute to share with you why I call and then we can determine if it makes sense if you talk. And you either give me permission to talk or you don't. Sure. You know, because your time is busy. I'm not gonna say, hey, let me tell you about, you know, you know, what we do at Sandler and how we do it before I even, you know, ask permission. That's just free. Yeah. And so, you know, because I catch people off guard. If I'm calling you in the middle of the day and you answer your phone, I have no idea if I interrupted you. Yep. And so to ask for permission is really the most important thing. And yeah. I, because your time and your you are important. And so if I'm interrupting, I'm interrupting. I'm yeah, I think that's great. That's a that's a key thing that people need to listen to. Um, my my quick story is uh, I was interested in, in getting a sales training this before I met you for uh, for our team. And it was either Dale Carnegie, which I you know everybody raves about, it's the old um, the old mm -hmm. standby or Grant Cardone, which is like a newer model. And I reached out to both of them and I asked them to send me information. And uh, uh, the, the Grant Cardone guys called on Saturday at like noon and uh, I answered the phone and I said, uh, hi, this, you know, they, they, they said, this is so-and-so from Grant Cardone. Uh, uh, we want to talk to you about uh, the information that you were asking for, whatever, whatever 
they said to get my interest. And I said, guys, uh, right now is not really a good time. Uh, I'm making lunch for my kids. It's Saturday. Can we touch base uh, later? Um, just send me the information. That's, that's what I want. I'm interested uh, in learning more. Just send me the information. And they said, oh, no, no, we understand. Um, this won't take much time at all. Uh, we just want to ask you a couple questions to make sure if it's right with the system. And I said, I understand. Uh, I reached out to you originally. I'm, I'm, I'm mildly interested. Please send me an email. I'm, I'm spending time with my kids. I'm trying to make lunch. No, 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 this, this, uh, this won't be a big deal. Um, what would be a good day for you to do that? Can we just set up a schedule? And I said, listen, I've told you three times now that I don't have time to do this. Um, and honestly, if one of my salespeople treated a customer like this, I'd be pissed. And I wouldn't want them to be on my team anymore. So do me a favor and don't send me information and don't reach out to me anymore because I'm not interested. I don't like the sales model and I'm assuming that you were trained in the model that you want to train me in. Not interested, thank you. You know, it's it's funny. Uh, there's a Sandler store just like that. You know, a guy uh, calls uh, this woman and he's talking to her and, and she says, well, I, I'm interested but I can't really talk anymore now, um, but I would like to talk in the future. And the, the, the salesperson with Sandler goes, well, usually when they tell me that they're they're interested but they can't talk now, that means no. And and the woman said, I am at the doctor's office with my children, getting them vaccinated for a trip to Europe. And and now that you've said that, I am no longer interested. Yeah. And I think that there's a clinical version of what salespeople do that follows the script and follows the rules. And then there's just the regular, let's talk like normal human beings yeah. and have a natural conversation. Look, I, I would always err on the side of grace that if the person's not interested um, or if they're not, if they can't finish the conversation now, I don't have to assume that that means they're not interested. Right. Um, the actions will work themselves out over time. You know, if we agree to put a time on the calendar and it gets blown off, then I guess I got my answer, right? Um, but I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them do what they do because it'll come back around if it's meant to be. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes it's just not the right time. And yeah. you know, you and I have been trying to touch base. If I miss the date, it's not because I don't want to talk to you. It's just there's there's a billion other things going on floating around, and I gotta dial in my other salespeople and I want you to call me and say, hey, Tony, did you follow up? Did you get that date? Or send me an email or send me a text. I'll give you my number. You can text me. That's easy. Whatever it is so we can schedule something. But here's here's the real rule that's it's that everybody breaks or at least that I'll never I try not to break. And the Sandler rule is it's never about me. It's always okay. about the prospect. It's always about the other person. Yeah. So when I start saying, hey, we need to talk now or we need to finish this conversation now or we that's about me. And so I try not to make it about me. I always want to make it about the prospect that the timing's not right. The timing's not right. Right. It doesn't mean it won't be till tomorrow. I think, you know, to me, no is directional. No just means we're not going to do what's on the books in the moment. Sure. It could be that we'll talk next week or next month or next year. And, you know, next year seems like a long time away right now, but it'll be here tomorrow. It's just uh, it happens, right? And, and the older you get, the faster a year goes by. Absolutely. So my years are really spinning. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, because I think that's the case. You know, you get all bent out of shape when you hear no, like it means, you know, it's over. And and I always say, well, you ever, you ever asked your significant other if you wanted to go watch, see this movie and they go no? Well, you didn't go into your bedroom and crawl in a fetal position and like, you know, you know, cry for three days. You just said, okay, what else do you want to do? <laughs> right. And then, so it just sort of shifts along the way. You know? And and, so, and he, even with that, sometimes no is the correct answer, and that's fine too. And the person knows that themselves. When I get the truth in an effective and efficient manner, I did my job well. Yeah. And I'm good. And then yep. I just move on to the next one. Because yep. there's a ton of opportunities out there. You know, I don't think there's any of us to say that we have, you know, canvassed the entire market that is three to five to 10 to 20 miles from where our office is. And so until you can do that, gosh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Take the nose, 
as the truth. You got the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did is, um, you mentioned it earlier, that, that the idea of salespeople, sometimes it has this dirty phrase, right? Like, no, I'm a salesperson at this company. It, it kind of sets the tone a little bit because people are leery of salespeople because it's in their name, right? It's, I, I'm selling you. That's, 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 to me, that's what it comes across as. Um, one of the things that we did is, is we changed the title of our, our salespeople to solution specialists because that's what we want them to be. We want them to dig in and find the solutions to the problems that a customer has um, and to work together with them to say, okay, what are the problems and how do we solve them? Uh, solutions means both parties coming together for a common good and, and, and solving the issue. Yeah, this is a collaborative process. I have to earn your trust enough for you to one tell me what's going on in your world so that to hear what may be embarrassing to you or uncomfortable for you to share with me about your world i got to get you to trust me enough to do that right and two i got to make sure that it is something you want to fix right? right that you really want to fix it's something that's important enough to fix and that uh, there's going to be value to fix it and then be a trusted partner in trying to figure out a, what's the solution, and B, what's the investment you're willing to make to, to create that solution? That's a good return on your investment. You know? And be collaborative in that process. And hey, I, I love starting small. Sometimes, you know, people love to win the big ones where, you know, you're making $200,000 sales. I'm like, dude, if a guy wants to pay me 20000 to start working with two or three of his people, and just do that, I'm like all good, all right. good. I have this phrase, this phrase is my phrase. All right, here we go. Uh, I like $400 better than no $100. So yes, um, it's like just get in because once you figure out that I know what I'm doing and, and you can see the value, then it creates an opportunity to, to grow and to be uh, a really trusted partner with. I, I, has, I always say something that's very similar to that, but I, I use like real dollars versus imaginary dollars, right? Like we should hold out because we could make this. Well, okay, we don't have that. That's not, that's not guaranteed for us to come in. I want the money now. Like give me what's real. Let me have what's real and then we can worry about the other stuff. But first we got to prove ourselves um, and get some trust. And Steve, uh, Steve Hack says, um, this happens in LinkedIn connection requests. People are pushy in their messages all the time. And uh, he says, uh, I like to say in emails, if our services, oh, wait, I gotta see more. If our services can ever be a benefit to you or your company, please feel free to reach out to me. Yeah, yeah Steve, let me, let me give you a different way to look at that. The first thing I do when I connect with someone on LinkedIn that actually responds to me is I'll say, hey, you want to find 15 minutes just to get to know each other, right? So I'll say some version of, you know, I love to meet the people I'm connected with. It's, it's fun hearing their stories. I enjoy that. But I know that not everybody's into that. So I'll ask you, would you be open to finding 15 minutes for us to just talk, get to know each other? If that's something you want to do, what's your availability? If it's not something you want to do, just tell me no. I'm, I'm okay. And so I can't start talking about my services or my products at any point till I've got to know this person on the other end. And I know there are people out there that, that might even think that's fake and not real. And they can believe what they want to believe, but it's real to me because I'm not going to try to sell somebody something until I know who they are. I don't have any idea what they need. They might right. not need my help. There's been plenty of conversations, Tony, where I've talked to a guy and I go, yeah, you got it going on. Why you don't need me? Right. You know, let's do what you're doing. Keep doing it. Right. Um, but it's been fun learning, learning about people. Yep. You know, I've I've been able to. I've been fortunate to be able to get some people that I met through LinkedIn a new job opportunity because they were looking for jobs, and I'm like, yeah, I know people. You know, tell me about what you're doing, and um, maybe I can hook you up with somebody that I know. And so. To me, it's really about giving, and it comes yeah. from a very genuine place. Yep. I mean, you don't know if I'm genuine until we have the conversation. So you want to have a conversation, great. You don't want to have a conversation. Well, and I think I think um, you know I don't know you much. Uh, just early conversations, reading your bio a little bit. Um, 
it's easy because you actually care about people. And so you're not, you're not looking for what do I get out of this all the time. It's not me centered. Like you said, um, you're, you're interested in giving and how do we do that? How do I give you what you actually need? Um, and supply that to you and you can't fake that that's either authentic or it's not and I think that's where you find the the slimy salespeople the swarmy salespeople that give that give it all a bad name because they're only looking uh, looking at it with how do I make this sale how do I increase the bottom line how do I get what I need and you are a casualty of of, uh, of my profit yeah I did right after the pandemic uh, you know after I realized it wasn't gonna die and, and, and not all my clients left me, right? Um, I thought, I have to do something. And so I started this 30-minute saying, learn 30. So I did this webinar every Tuesday from 1 to 1.30. And it was free. It was virtual. And I talked about saying for 30 minutes. And yep. you know, I had people showing up. And we never talked about, do you want to buy from me? Do you want to have a conversation? None of that. I, and I did it for 18 months. Okay. And just did it. And it was like, it was fun because I got to talk about, you know, seeing which I love dearly. And I got to help people maybe learn something that they didn't know. And it was really a, a good way to give back to the community. And yesterday, no, Tuesday? Uh, Monday. Afternoon. Here comes a good story. Here comes a good ending. This is going to be yeah, good. Yeah, this is the ending. So there was a woman. He was coming to one of my, he was coming to my executive briefing tomorrow. We do these monthly. And I reached out to her and go, Hannah, you're coming to the briefing. This is very cool. I haven't talked to you like forever. And she used to come to the San Juan 30. Yep. And I want to learn how to get better at selling. And I think I need to do my own professional development. And I'm like, all right, this is cool. And so, yeah. you know, they come back around at some point, right? And, uh, you know, if, if you give to get, it's not going to happen. You, know, right. you just give and you know at the end of the day i'm going to hook my horse to that and just let it take me where it takes me yeah and it's um there are a lot of very simple concepts in in what you're saying and you know i talked to i mean we were both at the amba conference there were a lot of great speakers there i talked to clint a little bit afterwards i talked to allison mm -hmm. a little bit afterwards um and just like uh how their messages are not they're not new messages. They're, they're, they're ancient messages. They're old messages about how to care for people and what that looks like. Um, and and uh, it's not a hard thing to do. There's a, there's a guidebook for it and uh, some people wanna read it and some people don't. And, and that's fine, um, but it's not rocket science. It's actually caring for people and helping people get what they want. Like Zig, Zil Zig Ziglar always said it, right? Help enough people get what they want and you'll get what you need. Right. And And, that's really what it boils down to. Yeah, and I think the other thing that that we do at Sandler is is we help our clients discover their own pain. Sure. So what you won't hear me do is ever say, well, you know, I know in the bio said so we do these five things, uh, but mostly when I'm on the phone talking to people, I say, here's what my clients tell me they experience, they struggle in the cell. Okay. And I'm bop, 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 whatever those things are. And then I go, Tony, is any of that relevant in your work? And I'm not going to talk about me at all. Right. I'm not going to say, well, you know, we're good at doing this and we can, you know, grow your sales five times. And I mean, you know, do you just struggle with getting people to give you answers in a, uh, in a decent time frame? Do you struggle with people blowing you off? Do you struggle with them getting to tell you how much they're willing to spend to make a problem go like, yeah, da, da, da. Now we've got something sure. to talk about. And so sure. it's really about helping them discover that they have some pain in their world that is costing them opportunities to grow. Yep. Yep. And that's what we work on. Yep. Uh, so let's see. Uh, what are the three tenets of Sandler? I, I like all of them, so I already know them, but you know, people listening and watching, they don't. Attitude, behavior, and technique. So you know, if you think of triangle, at the top is attitude, and the left, right, and the left corner is behavior, and the bottom is technique. So attitude we referenced earlier with the uh, mindset, you know, making sure that your mind's on right and that yep. your um, need for approval is low and your self-worth is high. 
because if I'm good to me, I can good, be good to other people. And if I'm and if I don't care about anything other than the truth, then I can have great conversations with people. And ask yep. Behavior is really about helping our clients build that prospect in front. It's shocking to me, Tony, how many people don't have a set number of interactions or prospect and activities they do on a daily basis. Yep. It boggles my mind. You know, if I didn't have, you know, what my number was every single day, I would be embarrassed. But I know. And so every single day I have a, a number of thousand emails and LinkedIn that I do and I just execute that plan. Because if I execute the plan, you know, I think it'll go fine. And really the key is is not worrying about the results. Sam yes. believes that success is the activity, not the results. You just do the behaviors, just do the work, just do what you say you're going to do, and the money will follow. Now, let me, can I ask you real quick about the yeah. about that? So, um, I've had conversations with people, and they give a little bit of pushback, and they say, "Why do you? Why are you so hung up on, you know, a hundred phone calls a week? Why does that matter? What What's the purpose of that number? What happens if I don't hit it? Is it Is it the end of the world?" Yeah, I, I think in a, you know, purely uh, uh, existential world, no, it doesn't matter, right? But I look at it like this. If we look at the people who are very successful in life that have mastered their craft, yeah. you think LeBron James needs to practice free throws? You think, uh, you know... Any of the softball, uh, the hockey players need to practice uh, their slap shot. You think any baseball player really needs to do batting practice? They do it because it keeps them fresh. It keeps them honed. It keeps them in the game. Whether your number is 100 or 10 or 50, I don't care. Just do it. Right. right. I'd rather you do 100% of 50 than no percent of 100, right? Because you get them done. Because you're missing opportunities. Those right. phone calls that you make, you're you're doing a lots of different things. You're promoting and practicing. You're promoting and marketing your business, like you said about the podcast. If you just put your name in there, you're you know sending that out. Yep. So I think you're you're promoting who you are as a company. You're practicing your shtick so that you can get better at it. So as you develop the way you talk to people, it becomes more natural in conversation. And I think the third thing that you get out of it is it thickens your skin. If yeah. you can't make phone calls, you know, struggle. You know, right. and, and phone calls is uh, uh, the way to go. I look at it like this. You can, the 4x4, four four, the 4x24 four rule, you know, if you want to get business today, pick up the phone. Hmm. You can either get business in 24 hours, 24 days, 24 weeks, or 24 months. If you want business faster pick up the phone. You want to send an email or LinkedIn and you want to wait six weeks for uh, somebody to be an engaged partner to talk to, well, knock yourself out. But I have no problem because if I get on the phone, I'm going to get the answer on them. They're going to say, yeah, let's talk or no, they're not. Yeah. One of the things that, that, uh, you know, we, we, not our, not our team, but you know, you'll ask somebody, did you reach out to that person? They're like, yeah. So you called them? Well, no, I sent them a message. Did you hear back? No. How long ago was that? Two weeks ago. Okay, then you still haven't talked to them. There's there's been no conversation yet. You haven't you haven't established anything, and you can't really get uh like like we were talking about. You can't build a relationship through email. It's impossible. You can't hear tone of voice. You can't you. you it's very direct and straightforward, and you don't get into all the ancillary stuff. You don't find out that somebody's going to be off on Friday because they're having a graduation party for their daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then you can't ask them later how it went and carry that conversation going and build trust and have a relationship. And part of that, part of the behavioral part of what we do is we teach them how to do prospecting calls and how to do prospecting emails, how to send LinkedIn, how to do talks, how to do trade shows, how to do um, networking so that they get comfortable. And one of the great rules that David Sandler used to say was don't be creative. So mm -hmm. the process I used to make a phone call I've been doing for 10 years. It has okay. not changed. It is not different today than it was 10 years ago. It's better today than it was 10 years ago. Sure. It's not different. So, I mean, I do the same things and because I don't have to be creative. 
you know, when I get on the phone, it's like, okay, here's where, let's go, boom, done. Right. Figure out where it takes us. So, yeah, and then right. the last uh, tenet of Sandler's technique. And technique is really a little bit about what's behind me on the board here, uh, the seven compartments that I work with my prospects when we sit down and have a sales call. How do I get them from bonding rapport and the upfront contract to paying budget decision making to fulfillment so that I can help them discover that, you know, maybe we're the solution to their problem. And so this is what Sandler is really about. And more than selling, I think uh, attitude, behavior, and technique is masterful and problem solving. Yeah. If you sit down and have a problem, I think the first thing I would always do is say, all right, what is the attitude in my head that needs to be reframed, right? And what behaviors do I need to sort of readjust in my world to fix that? And then what techniques will help me do that? And so it's really been a good problem solved. And that's Sandler. That is Sandler in the core, and that's what we teach. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a simple concept, but it's not easy. You know? Uh, there's nuance to the way people talk and there's nuance to the way people communicate and process information and think. And our job is to help our clients navigate those those situations as they come up so that they can become better at it over time. Yeah, and those are, I, I'm guessing those are part of the, the, the core values of Sandler. Those are the <laughs> core values of Sandler. And if you live by those things, you're gonna you're gonna be able to achieve your goals. Hold on, this is making me crazy. I gotta fix the TV real quick. Yeah, no Sorry. problem. So I, I I know I'm so professional, but hey, it's just me, and it's and it's what happens. You're all good, honey. You, you, you gotta you gotta be where you need to be. So yeah, good. it's making me crazy. I can see it, and now you know. There we go. There we go. Uh... All right. Sorry. I had to fix it. Yeah. Now it's fixed and I feel better. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, you have to do those things based on your core values. And, and if you're doing those things then you can achieve your goals. And if you find yourself doing something other than that, it's probably not the right direction that you should be going in. Yeah, one of our, one of our core values here within the office is fail early, fail off to learn something. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I have no problem, you know, failure, you know, this guy hung up on me, right? So, uh, if you want to define it in the strictest terms, that was a failed phone call, right? But, you know, what did I learn? Okay, I learned that it didn't bother me, and that's good. <laughs> you know, five years ago, it may have not been the case. Right. But now, yeah. Okay. Well, and you can even look at it and say, okay, he hung up on me. Did he say something that I should have picked up on that made me, that, that maybe this was not the right time? Or, may, or was it just immediate? Was I was I was I too much in myself for a rare yeah, yeah, moment that yeah, I have an off day? Yeah. Like all those things are real things that you can think about, not just hang up and go. Well, that guy was a jerk. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't want to work with them anyways and have sour grapes. There's a reflection period, right? Because I think that you know I pull I pull this. Uh, I, I say I'm, I'm going to do my Ted Lasso here. Oh, I love Ted Lasso. Because there was a scene, if you remember, the dartboard scene. Yes. In one of the early episodes when he was talking about being judgmental as opposed to curious, right? Yep. And, and I leaned over to my lady friend while we were watching and said, I'm still going to stand out of that going forward. So, oh, yeah. And I, and I tell people all the time, quit being judgmental, be curious. You know, a guy hangs up on me, you figure out, well, you know, maybe you just had a bad day. Maybe a week later, I'm going to reach out in a different venue, maybe an email or a LinkedIn and say, hey, you know, caught you. Thanks for taking my call. I caught you at a bad time. You know, maybe somewhere down the road, I'll see you at another event and we'll have a chance to call. You just leave it at that. Yeah. And that's, it's because again, you're putting it, you're putting them ahead of yourself. You want to make that sale, but it's not the right time and you got to let it go. And, and, you know, you got to realize a part of it is maybe the, the approach I do, at least that's how I look at it. I look, I, part of it might be the approach that I had for that day, the mood, the mindset that I was in, the attitude, like you talk about, um, and how can I, what do I need to do differently? And then I'll make another phone call, not, you know, like you said earlier, sit in the field, uh, fetal position and, and, and cry yeah. about it. But yeah. Let's move forward. I mean, this one didn't work out. The next one may. Let's. You, but you don't know unless you make that next phone call. 
Well, didn't Gretzky say you'd miss 100% of the shots? Yep. So you just, you just, you know, pick up the phone, man. Pick up the phone. These are leading indicators. Uh, I can control my leading indicators. I can control the things I can control. I can't control the other things, so I won't even try. But I know I can make my calls and emails and LinkedIn and go home at night and say, you know what I said? I did what I said I was going to do. Good. Yeah. Fact, and crack open a cold one and be good. And I like that you say that, um, you know, every phone call you make is the same formula, right? You, you know how you're going to go into it. You know how you're going to end it. You know what the conversation is going to be. But it's not uh, a scripted formula where, you know, back in the day, they had a whole script. You called, you, you read the script to the person and you waited for, for those answers. And then you have another, you know, you turn the page and you got more answers. It's a, it's a process. But you also have the ability to be creative and, and flow yeah. within that. You're not, now, you're not I'm so regimented. Burst your bubble a little bit. There is a little bit of scripting that goes right. on in the beginning when I teach people because I think absent of some direction, they'll default to benefits and features and benefits which nobody wins from. And okay. so I want to give them a, something else to work on. And so we help them, you know, follow. It's really more of here's eight steps in terms of how a pressure, no pressure prospect and call can go. Um, but after you do it a bunch of times, it starts to become you. And I tell them all the time, this is this is what I'm teaching you. But change the words to sound like you. Right. Make it you. Uh, the way I talk is the way I talk, and you know, nobody wants to hear that from other people. So be you. And and but over time, what you know is you're you're going to follow the process. Right. And. And that's the great thing about it. I know that every time I get on a phone call, I know where I'm going with it. And I just let the call take me where it goes. Well, I like different. it. I, I think we're basically on the same page. I, yeah, yeah, no. Because I think, you know, if you think about, you know, we had that conversation with, uh, you know, Vanessa and uh, Michelle and uh, Jean. What's the other one? Jessica. Jessica. You know, we're there and we we're talking about what a 30 second commercial should look like, right? Right. And everybody's going to have their version of it. And that's all it is. As long as it's natural, as long as it's concise and uh, compelling. I don't care what it's like. All right. Well, how did I do on my uh, on my intro on 30 second commercial? You did fine. All you right. Did that's, fine. that's good. You can now I would tell you if you were prospecting to somebody, I would say, you know, bring some more pain. You know, Oh, yeah, sure. You're doing the, you know, you're doing a broadcast. So go, yeah, no, I think that, you know, I learned something about what you do. I, I liked what you said about we do everything uh, that mold makers don't want. Yeah. And that, to me, was like, boom, that right there is the best thing you could say. Because there's like probably four or five things they don't want to do, right? Yeah, yeah, or don't have the time to do. That's that's yeah, really what we looked at. the inclination, the time, the resources, you know, or, or want to. I get that all the time. All right, so uh, we started doing these these quick little questions last last show. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. We got a couple of them here. Um, unless anybody listening has any questions, feel free to put those in there. But I'm going to ask a couple of these. I think they're I think they're fun. Uh, what do you consider yourself an expert at? Um, um, So you may not know this, but my first professional career was in the culinary world. So okay. I grew up working for Hyatt Hotels and I learned how to cook. And so I think I do a really good job of cooking. And so, um, you know, I did a profession for a long time before I shifted gears. And so I'm pretty sure I can, you know, make anything you guys want to make. And, you know, we used to do these. My my lady friend and I would go to dinner, and, and I would say, "Oh, I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make that when I get home." And we would have these uh, uh, mission trips for the church, and we'd auction off things. And they asked me to auction off a dinner for six. Okay. And so I did it, you know. And so it was a great. It made all these like small plates, like six small plates, uh, six couples, three couples, so six people. We'd go to their house. I'd bake everything at their house, dish it up. Serve it to them in their house. That's a and good deal. The second time I did it, we had to do two because it was like a bidding war. <laughs> so ah. It ended up being fun. So I think that would be the thing. 
I think I, I think I would consider myself uh, pretty good at cooking. All right. What, uh, what coming, what upcoming life event are you most excited about? Well, it just happened. So, uh, all right. Think we should have talked a week ago. <laughs> Actually, yeah, my daughter came into town from Austin, Texas, um, two weeks ago, and it was great to see her. I hadn't seen her uh, in a while, and uh, that was that was really fun. What's coming up? I don't have anything on my calendar coming up, so uh, yeah. I guess so, I, I guess just the opportunity. The opportunity to wake up tomorrow is the is the next most exciting thing. Yeah, basically thing. <laughs> get out of bed every time. So. Uh, what is the main quality that you think makes a great parent? Listening. Um, I always told Esther this. I said, if you can make a compelling argument for what you're going to do, hmm. and I don't have any... Uh, you know, any override you need to say no, I won't say no. Yeah. And and so that's how she grew up. And then uh, when she went to she went to the University of Missouri, um, and you know we had this we had to have the conversation. So how are we going to have those kind of hard conversations that you need to tell me when you're in school? Yep. And so she said, Dad, I got it. She said, I'm going to say, I'm going to Dad, which is always a bad thing to start with. Yeah. How do you want to tell? How do you want me to tell you something you might not want to hear? Ah, that's good. And I would say quickly. And so every time she said that to me at school, the first thing I did was say quickly, and the second thing I did was say was to take my dad hat off and put my thinking hat on and say, okay, I'm going to listen to what Esther to say. Yeah, because here comes the next part of the conversation. Again, she's uh, she's doing the first thing you said, right? She's asking for your permission mm -hmm. to tell you something that's going to be difficult to hear. Yeah, and so the first time she did it to her, she goes, Dad, how do you want me to tell you something I'm here quickly? I'm not coming home for Thanksgiving. And so I pause and I go, okay, so when are you going to tell me the thing I'm not going to want to hear? <laughs> and she started laughing. <laughs> and, I, and I said, what? Why would I be upset? I said, what are you going to do, by the way? I'm going to do a service trip in Colorado. Oh, now, yeah. What's wrong with that, right? Yeah. 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 Doing a service project? Yeah, go do that. Uh, I can eat turkey alone for one year. That's fine. Exactly. Yeah. My, uh, my son, when he, was, um, when he was probably sixth grade, uh, he, he came to me and he said, um, I think that I should be allowed to uh, play video games longer. And I said... Okay, why? And we, we originally had a rule for every hour he read, he could play one hour of video games. So maybe it wasn't sixth grade, it might've been fourth or fifth grade, whatever it was. And I said, okay, tell me why, explain it. And he said, well, I go to school all day and I'm reading and I'm doing things at school. And then, um, you know, we have dinner at this time and then I have to do this stuff to get ready for the next day of school. And so, um, you know, I just, I would like more time to relax. And I think that I'm getting good grades in school. He was, he was an honor, honor roll student. He did well at everything. And uh, I said, okay, how much more time do you think that you deserve? And he said, maybe, maybe an hour and a half. And I was like, okay, we can do that. Um, yeah, but right. it was just that he thought it through first. You know, it wasn't just, you know, he, he stomping his foot and whining and saying, this isn't fair. <laughs> like he actually came and, and had a conversation about it. And it, and it was it was great. And it's that it's that listening thing. We, we recently had a conversation um, without going into all the details about it. You know, every person he told said he shouldn't tell me about what it what it, what was going on because of how I was going to react. And so he was terrified to have a conversation with me. And um, we just had to get to the point where I said, listen, buddy, there's nothing that you can't tell me or nothing that you can tell me that's going to make me not love you or not forgive you. And we're going to be good. So I don't care what any of your friends say. I don't care what, what your brain says. I don't care what anything is going on. There's, there's nothing that you can't say, that you will say that we won't be able to work through. So let's go. And I think, I think that's the point, right? And if we're real being honest with ourselves, most of the stuff that they tell us we did when we were kids. And we oh, yeah. And it's like, okay. 
I and worse. Is, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I think the other thing about uh, being a parent, and, and this is really not about being a parent, but I think we do our young adults a disservice by not listening to them because they all have voices and we shut them off too soon uh, because they're 16 or 14 or yeah. 19. And I'm like, oh, it just kills me um, because they have voices and they've got good things to say and we ought to listen more often. To them. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, um, we have to we have to get out of our own way sometimes and stop doing the uh, I, one of the things I told my son is um, I'll never tell you because I said so. You know, we, we can discuss it. I'll tell you the why. You may not like the why, um, but I'll tell you why, because I think that's a, it's a cheap answer and there's no learning in just because I said so. And, and one of the things that that Sandler has done and not a lot of people do it. I happen to do it is, you know, work with young adults. So we, we have some programs that we could do with young adults to help them learn some of their soft skills around uh, reading people and having good, strong up on contracts and learning how to plant your feet in the ground and learning how to say no and all of that that they, they don't learn to do, right? Right. And sometimes the parents are too emotionally invested to really help them. Right. And so uh, it's, been, it's been fun working with some young adults of my clients who my clients ask me could I work with them to sort of help them get past some things. So that's been some fun. Yeah, it's a it's a fun, it's fun. I mean, I I have the fortune of working with our uh, kids program at church, and then also our youth program. So uh, I have my, I get to spend time with kindergarten through fifth grade, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. sixth grade through high school on separate nights, and um, it's it's great. And you you learn stuff about yourself and about them all the time. Um, and some of the things you learn is these kids don't have anybody to talk to, and so you know sometimes that's just what they need to hear. They, they, they need, need to, to be heard, like you said. Listen to them, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so we are we're getting further along. There's still some people listening. One of the things that we always do, Ken, is we uh, we we end the show with prayer um, because it's something that's really important to me. Yeah. And uh, so, if anybody is still listening and you have any prayer requests, go ahead and put those in the comments section, um, and we will mention them. And I'll ask you, Ken, do you have any prayer requests for? Uh, life yeah actually yeah pray for my brother okay um so while we're waiting to see if anything else comes in um who was the best boss you ever had and what made them the best i have to say that when I was at the Hyatt Regency St. Louis, and this goes back to 1991, I was the human resources director of the hotel, and the general manager of the boss. And what I liked about it was that he allowed me latitude to do the things I needed to do in the hotel. Uh, and he didn't micromanage. Yep. And and I think Eric, my partner here, does the same thing. You know, we don't, I do what I do because I'm a professional business person. Right? I don't need to have someone telling me how to run the business. Right. And, and we talk and, you know, you know, I run scenarios by and we have conversations. But basically, I know what I need to do. And, and I like when people give me that freedom to, to do what I do. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I have no problem being a team player. I have no problem following the rules. But, you know, if you want to know something, ask me. You don't have to think I don't already have it under control. Yeah, Simon, uh, Simon Sinek, has a, he, he does a whole talk about um, a, a gentleman who worked at two different hotels in, I think it was Las Vegas. One was the Four Seasons. One was wherever and the difference of opinion of what that individual felt where at both of those companies it's it's good it's really good i don't know if you've heard it but um it's it's a great lesson for people that are managing other people and and how to how to live in that way 
Well, I think we learned it in the pandemic, right? Um, uh, I think some managers were probably shocked that uh, their people still did their jobs without them hovering over their heads. Yeah. And that's a good lesson to learn. I think at the end of the day, you know, the results of what you're supposed to do will manifest themselves. So if you're supposed to do those hundred dials, you know, you can lie to me and tell me you did it, but I'm going to know a month later whether you sold anything, right? It's right. all going to go up. So, you know, I'm going to figure it out at some point. Right. And so I don't need to manage it. Either. The results themselves will manage because I think it's the opposite is true. If you do what you say you're going to do, success and money will fall. I, I think that's a good way to end that conversation. You nailed that in a nutshell. I mean, that's a good, succinct way. Um, I didn't see any other uh, prayer requests come in. So if it's okay with you, I'll pray with uh, pray for us. And then uh, we can wrap this up and we can both get on our way because I know that you are a busy guy. You got a lot going on uh, and, and more people to help. So uh, yeah, appreciate the time on the call. Yeah, let me uh, let me pray for us and then we'll wrap this up. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to uh, talk with Ken. Um, thank you that you brought him into our lives and uh, allowed his voice to be heard. Um, in different applications. Thank you for the way that he um, genuinely shows love and care for other people around him and the success that follows because of it. And uh, we just pray that other people would notice that and see it and wonder what's different and unique and they would follow that same model. Um, And we pray for his brother for um, whatever it is that he is going through um, that is only important to you and him and uh, and, and that's it. Uh, Just ask that you would intervene and that your will would be done in that situation. And uh, we just pray for everybody that's listening, everybody that is, um, you know, trying to get by day by day, that you would give them the strength and the courage to, uh, to keep going and that you would lift their hearts and they would have joy in the situations that they're in. And uh, you would continue to keep us safe, that you would continue to uh, help us to make an impact on the world around us and that through all of it, you would get the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ken, thank you, my friend. It was a pleasure talking to you for an hour. Uh, for 58 minutes to be exact uh, and uh, you know I, I didn't disagree with anything you had to say uh, honestly and Steve Hack agrees he said thanks guys I learned a lot and um, so I just want to thank you for um, the time that you take with people and, uh, and and your passion for what you're doing and uh, and the fact that you were willing to do this even though we haven't had a chance to sit down and talk and see how that might work you you saw uh, more benefit in being able to do something like this and hopefully it grows down the line and uh, we can encourage other people to talk with you so thank you for all that i appreciate that i appreciate the time you know i know uh, there was something about your team that struck me and i'm like it seems to got it going on it seemed like the group genuinely likes and cares for each other now i know why so i appreciate the time on the show um and uh i'll see you around i'll see you around the campus yeah we'll do something we'll we'll hook up at some point um if nothing else uh i want to have a drink and and a a meal with you and just talk more i I imagine you got some awesome stories so thank you my friend uh i look forward to spending some more time with you take care tony thanks for having me on the show you got it bye Oops, uh, now you're going back and forth. I'm, I'll get it. There we go. All right. I'm rusty. What can I say? It's one. It's 2.30 now. Uh, thank you all for listening. Um, I had a great time talking with Ken. Uh, it's, it's always fun for me when, like, the first real time I'm talking with somebody is when it's live and other people can hear it because um, – there's, there's no act there. It's not like we get together beforehand and say, hey, let's script this. We're going to talk about this, this, that, and that. It's just what what comes up. And what comes up is, in my opinion, are the things that people should hear. Um, and so uh, I appreciate all that time. Uh, and I'm grateful to the AMBA for uh, having an event where we were able to, to connect and uh, he was able to be an impact on our, our team. So um, on behalf of, oh, wait, we should talk about this. The golf outing is coming up September 23rd. Um, it's going to be a really, really good time. 
Registration will be opening soon. It's not open yet. We're nailing down some pricing structures. Uh, we're doing some things a little bit differently. I think that you guys are really going to love it. Um, if you are somebody that uh, doesn't like golf, this is the perfect event for you to come to. Uh, there's barely any golf. It's networking, it's drinking, it's games, it's fun. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's really only about making a difference. Uh, we, we barely even keep score. So it's just hanging out for an entire day with people that you actually like and care about and, uh, and, and having your dollars and your actions make a difference in other people's lives. So um, we will have more information about that coming out soon. Uh, and we will make sure that we share that with you guys. Um, and if you have any interest in being part of the show or um, you know somebody that might be a good guest, please reach out to us and let us know uh, at Tony at AllianceLaserSales.com and uh, we'll be sure to get back to you right away. And please, please, please uh, like, share the video, share the podcast, um, share it with somebody that you think might find some value in what we talked about today. There was a lot of good stuff that Ken shared, uh, a lot of techniques, a lot of tricks, a lot of tips, um, but at the end of the day, it's all about um, caring about the person you're talking to. So uh, on behalf of myself and Ken and Alliance and Sandler and, and all of that, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you for caring at all. Uh, we appreciate your time and uh, we hope that you found some value and maybe even laughed a little bit. So uh, we'll see you next week. And until then, take care and God bless.